the River by Sarah Teasdale. I came from the sunny valleys and sought for the open sea, for I thought in its gray expanses my peace would come to me. I came at last to the ocean and found it wild and black. And I cried to the windless valleys, be kind and take me back. But the thirsty tide ran inland and the salt waves drank of me. And I, who was fresh as the rainfall, and bitter as the sea. The River by Sarah Teza is a really interesting poem to me. I really like the word choice, the symbolism, the metaphor, the meter in it, and also the rhyming. Teasdale uses a really unique way of rhyming things. She first begins rhyming the second and the fourth lines of each stanza. The second and fourth lines of the first stanza is AA. Second and fourth lines of the second stanza is BB. And the second and fourth lines of the third stanza is again AA. She takes the same word C that is used in the first rhyming scheme and puts it at the very end of the stanza, which kind of draws a connection to how she first views the C and how she ends viewing the C. So it's first described that the C is very open and there's great expanses and that peace will come to her, or in this case the river, because that's what she is describing. But in the, se in the last stanza, the salt waves drink of the river, and the river, which was as fresh as rainfall, is now bitter as the sea. So something that at first held great expanses, and at first held a lot of opportunity, is now something that is less than pleasant to be around. I really think this poem is a metaphor for life. So the river goes from these windless valleys, windless and sunny valleys, down to the sea. At first this is viewed as a very open experience, something where peace of mind will come, and something where there's a lot of opportunity to see that the sea is open and there's a bunch of expanses. But then in the second stanza, this quickly changes when, she, when the river comes at last to the ocean, it is wild and black and it's almost a torrent of all these things that the river was afraid of. And it cries to the windless valleys to be kind and take it back. And I think this can parallel life a bit when we finally get into adulthood and all we want to do once we get there is turn around and go back to childhood because it was so much easier and less stress was found in childhood. And then in the very last stanza, it says, The thirsty tide ran inland, and the salt waves drank of me. And I think this is really interesting because it's like, how life can kind of get to you, and it can just take out all the freshness that you had, because the river was as fresh as rainfall, and now as bitter as the sea. And I think it's really interesting how optimistic child like childness or the innocence of childhood can quickly be replaced by I think cynicism and I think this poem isn't saying that's what has to happen but I think it warns against it because we all know or maybe we don't all know but of adults who have been changed because they have a cynical look on life because bad things have happened to them and I think the poem is bringing to light that what life can do to people. I also really enjoy Teasdale's symbolism and metaphor of the valley. If we look at the valley as we look at childhood, it really fits. The valley is sunny, and it's also windless, as described in the second stanza. And I think this is really important because a lot of the times we look back on childhood as something that was incredibly happy almost all the time. And there was little to no resistance in the things that we did. But just as a child, 
looks to adulthood, the river also looks to the open sea. And that's what she shows in the first stanza, is the river looking to the open sea in its gray expanses. And I think as a child we also see that. It describes the sea as expansive and almost as open that peace would come, but it's also described as gray, meaning there is no color in the future, or we don't know what the future has to bring. So though we believe peace can be found there, it seems almost vacant of any happiness. And I think that's also how, and as a child, that's sometimes how we view adults without happiness. And then, if we view the ocean as light, it really shows a darker side than what you would expect. Because life is supposed to be abundant and full of things. But when it shows the ocean here, it's wild and black. All the opportunity that was at first in the expanse of sea is nowhere to be found again. And the river only cries, be kind and take me back. The windless valley was so pleasant. It would rather be back there than this thrashing ocean. And I think the thirsty tide ran inland in the salt wave strength of me really describes as as we grow up, our childhood is slowly drained of us. And instead of being carefree and totally optimistic about the world as we used to be, it's really easy for pessimism and cynicism and a negative look on the world to be developed. And like I said earlier, I don't think this poem is saying that has to be what it is, but it shows that it's so easy in this world to find that place. And I feel like it's the poem, The River, is more a warning against cynicism because it's so easy to fall into that trap of bitterness and anger. In short, I really like looking at the poem, The River, because it expresses something that I've always felt should be expressed. Because when childhood is taken away, especially for me, it kind of seems like the best days are over. And this poem really gets to a good point of describing how crazy it can be, just like for the river it is for people in general. But I think it shows that cynicism that easily rests in people. And I feel like that's something that we should be wary of. Because in the end, it's such a sad ending. And it's such a negative connotation to being bitter that it makes me and should, I think, make all of us be self-aware of the cynicism that lurks inside of us when we feel that life is going the wrong way.
To the border